Stephen Curry is without a doubt one of the greatest point guards to ever play the game of basketball. His ball handling and passing ability mixed with his lethal three-point shooting ability changed the way the game is played and made him become the best shooter of all time. Thanks to what Steph has done on the court, many kids nowadays are working on their three-point shot at rates never seen before, and three-point shooting has become a necessity for all players who wish to earn significant minutes in the NBA. But what if I told you that many people didn't believe in Steph coming out of college, and some didn't think he would last in the NBA? That probably sounds crazy for you to hear, but here's what NBA draft analysts were saying about Curry before he was drafted. Coming out of Davidson, many scouts were unsure of the 6'3 guard's position in the NBA. Spending most of his time in college playing off the ball, many thought that Curry would be better off as a shooting guard in today's NBA. But his short height was concerning for a player of that position. Combining this with the fact that he didn't play point guard officially in college until his junior year, many people were unsure about what his true position in the NBA would be. Scouts were comparing him to that of JJ Redick or Daniel Gibson, both of whom were role players in the NBA who could shoot the ball really well but not do much else. Many scouts were also concerned about his shot selection, since during his freshman year at Davidson, 60% of his shots came from the three-point line. You're probably looking back at this and laughing, saying that even today Curry takes some pretty crazy shots, but they end up going in nonetheless, but that wasn't always the case. You probably know him from his 35-foot pull-ups on a fast break. Those shots would get any other player in the NBA benched, but he was doing the same thing at Davidson as well. After a very successful three years at Davidson, Curry entered the draft where the doubts and criticism continued. With the seventh pick in the 2009 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Stephen Curry from Davidson College. ESPN's Chad Ford said that Ricky Rubio and Johnny Flynn were the best point guards in the draft, and that was the general consensus at the time as well. If we take a look at the notes that scouts took of Curry for his draft night analysis, you'd see that they marked down relies too heavily on outside shot and college system makes him difficult to evaluate. Little did those scouts know that Curry's over-reliance on his shot wouldn't matter when he becomes the greatest shooter of all time, and the development of his shot would lead to other parts of his game expanding as well. You see it happening today with Curry, when defenders bite on the screen he can either attack the basket or pull up for three. Those were all skills though that he'd yet to perfect in college. But you guys all know what happens next, and if you're a Timberwolves fan, you might want to close your own ears on this one, but the Minnesota Timberwolves ended up using their 5th and 6th pick in the draft to pick both Rubio and Flynn, leaving Curry to fall to 7th to the Golden State Warriors. Warriors fans weren't too thrilled about that selection, especially since the team needed a big man at the time. Monty Ellis, the star of the team at that time, didn't hold back with his frustrations with drafting Curry, saying, we both play the same position and can't play alongside one another. The comments got so out of hand that Ellis's wife had to step in and tell Monty to apologize for those public statements, and to stop putting his team in a bad light. But you know the story, Karma would eventually get to Ellis, as just three years later the team would trade him to the Milwaukee Bucks in exchange for Andrew Bogut, a key part in their championship run in 2015. So before the game we got a chance to hear from Monte Ellis and he talked about uh, the trade and moving away from Golden State and heading east to the Bucks. There was one person who believed in Curry though, right from the start. Someone that you may have heard before, someone that the Bulls and the Warriors fans were very thankful to have in their franchise. Steve Kerr, Curry's head coach in Golden State. Back in 2009, Steve Kerr was the general manager for the Phoenix Suns, who were contending for a championship at the time. Kerr loved Curry so much that he was willing to trade franchise player Amari Stoudemire to the Golden State Warriors for the seventh pick in the draft, so that he could draft Curry. The trade didn't go through, but Kerr did unite with Curry in Golden State in 2015 when he became head coach, and you all know how that ended up. Despite that, it would be fun to think of a backcourt duo of Steve Nash and Steph Curry. Do you think that duo would make a splash in the NBA? The selection of Curry ended up being a blessing in disguise for Golden State. Pairing him up with Klay Thompson created the best shooting backcourt in NBA history and earned them the nickname the Splash Bros. Now, every time you think of Curry, what do you envision? A pioneer to the game who changed the way it was played with his shooting ability. You think of Ray Allen and how his record for most three-point shots ever is going to be shattered very soon by Steph. You probably think of him being the first unanimous MVP in league history, and you probably think of those three championship rings he won against the Cleveland Cavaliers going up against none other than LeBron James. Despite being 1-3 in the finals against Steph, LeBron has massive amounts of respect for his fellow Akron-born native. When asked about Steph in 2015, LeBron said, I don't think people understand how great his motor is, and how great he shoots the ball off the dribble. A reporter followed up this question asking how you can slow him down, to which James replied, same way you slow me down, you can't. Getting that level of respect from the best player in the game saying you're unguardable really shows how terrorizing Steph is for an NBA defense. 
Western Conference semifinals. As Curry does his magic, gets back to the and scores. Scotty Pippen, a former NBA superstar who was a lockdown defender and now a current day analyst for ESPN, said it is very difficult to keep the ball out of Steph's hands. When he's getting the ball two to three times per possession, I wouldn't want to defend that. One of the best defensive players ever is saying how he would forfeit playing defense against a talent like Steph because his game is so polarizing and deadly that a defense can only pray to stop him. I wouldn't want to defend him. I mean. In the days that I played this game, I've never seen a guy other than maybe a Reggie Miller where you just didn't want him to touch the ball. But Steph has got the defense so extended. Steph has even gotten Ray Allen to admit that he is the best shooter ever. On an episode of ESPN First Take, Ray Allen was quoted saying, I think he is the best that I have ever seen shoot. I've seen some great shooters, and I would put him in a category of his own. Oh, it's tough to say. You know, Steph is a great, sh- he's a great shooter. When the only person in NBA history who has made more three-pointers than you so far acknowledges that his record will soon be shattered and that you do what he was a master at better than him, you deserve the passing of the crown for being the best shooter ever. And that's not even what your entire game consists of. Decide not to use it, Curry! Way downtown! Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! With six tenths of a second remaining! Kobe Bryant, who many fans like us agree has the most killer mentality in NBA history, had some praise to give Steph about his demeanor and approach to the game. On a December 24th, 2015 episode of ESPN First Take, Kobe was quoted saying, it's a serious calmness about him that's extremely deadly. He's not worried about what happens next, he's just there. It's a serious calmness about him, which is uh, extremely deadly. Being able to handle the extreme amount of intensity and nerves in an NBA game while staying calm and dominating is something that not very many NBA players can do. But just like Kobe, Steph didn't let his nerves get to him, and that's what makes him one of the best point guards ever. Kobe Bryant was all about dominating games, and a big part of domination came from confidence and mentality, and that's exactly what Kobe saw in Steph Curry. The biggest praise that you can get as an NBA player, however, is when you are in the GOAT conversation, or the debate for being the greatest player of all time. And analyst Bill Simmons thinks that Curry not only belongs in the conversation, but holds the title. In his episode, Thinking Basketball, on April 15th, 2021, Simmons built off of Reddit users' claim of Curry being the GOAT, saying, even though Jordan wasn't consistent with his threes, he found a way to score. Even though LeBron hasn't been known to be the best scorer, he has consistently put himself out there as one of the greatest scorers. Steph Curry has been performing at a higher level than that this season, and with the form they're in, the Warriors might take the 8th seed. Bill Simmons has crowned Steph Curry with the title for being the greatest offensive player ever, even better than LeBron and Jordan, which is who the casual fan might give the title to. When it's all said and done, Steph Curry is going to be remembered as not only the best shooter in NBA history, but also one of the best players as well. His approach to every game, along with his leadership and skill, is still something that no NBA defense has figured out how to slow down. The two-time MVP and seven-time All-Star wasn't always seen by fans like us as the player that he is today, but he has used the criticism as fuel to become the greatest shooter of all time. What were some of your reactions to Steph before the draft? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more NBA videos like this.